I am back with another blood sugar experiment. This is our fruits bad for blood sugar part two. I know it's been forever since I've done a video, forever, 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 but today I wanna to continue exploring to see how different fruits impact my blood sugar as somebody who is insulin resistant. So the last time I did this blood sugar experiment, I tested the impact of blueberries, apples, and bananas on my blood sugar. This time I will be testing oranges, strawberries, and the ever feared grape. So let's get into it. So I have my breakfast here, an orange. This is a sumo orange. Um, if you guys have never tried a sumo orange, they're actually really, really delicious and sweet. They look a little bit creepy, but honestly, so, so good. Um, I haven't had anything to eat this morning, obviously, except a little bit of water. Um, and one serving size of an orange is just one orange. Now this thing looks pretty massive, but the uh, peel is very thick. So once I peel it, I'll kind of show you what the size of it is. Before I do that, I'm going to test my blood sugar so I can see where I'm at before I start eating this guy. I'm a little bit scared because oranges don't have the best reputation when it comes to uh, insulin resistance or diabetes, but let's see what happens. So I peeled my sumo orange here. So this is the size, I don't know, I'll put it next to my face so you can see the size. Typical orange size, I think. Um, so I am going to go ahead and eat this. So two things I want to mention as I'm eating. So first off, I do these experiments to see how my body responds to different foods. Everyone's body is different and these results can't be applied to anyone but me. Second, I'm not here to villainize fruit by any means. I think fruit is such a good source of vitamins that our bodies need and crave and I incorporate it into my diet freely nowadays. I would just like to see if there are certain fruits that my body responds better or worse to so I can just keep that in mind. So unexpected. My blood sugar after one hour was 95. I really thought it would be much higher. Um, although I do have to say that after eating that orange, I didn't notice my body having any type of like physical response to it. So typically when I eat something that's higher in sugar, uh, for example, like at Costco the other day, they were passing out hot chocolate samples in these tiny cups. I only took a couple sips, I didn't even finish it, and I noticed that my heart started racing after just a couple minutes. Um, but with this orange, I didn't really notice any type of like bodily symptom. So, okay, 95 after one hour. Your phone too? So yesterday's results with that orange were less than remarkable. I mean, my blood sugar really didn't do much, but as unremarkable as it was, I was still really surprised at how little my blood sugar rose going from just 84 to 95 and then coming back down within those two hours. But I will take it because I feel like it's a huge win. Um, today, I'm gonna be testing strawberries and I don't really foresee anything interesting happening here either. Berries are supposed to be one of the best fruits for anyone with metabolic dysfunction. So my prediction is that my blood sugar will be just fine. Uh, one serving of strawberries is one cup, which Google says is about eight strawberries. So I have that here. And I tested my blood sugar to see where I am at before I start eating these. And I will check back in with you guys once I'm done with this. All right, so at the one hour mark, my blood sugar rose to 100, which is totally acceptable, actually great. And essentially the orange and strawberry had the same impact on my blood sugar. So let's see what happens at the two hour mark here. Ew, I didn't get enough blood. Okay, so 92. I mean, all right, so this video has so far been very uneventful. But next, I'm going to be testing grapes, and I have a feeling we might be seeing a little something happen there. So stay tuned for that. All right, so let's get right into testing grapes. Um, it's Saturday, so my kids are sleeping in, so I'm going to be just a little bit more quiet so they don't wake up. Hopefully, you guys can hear me okay. So one serving of grapes is a cup. So I have here 24 grapes. And just an FYI, I tried some of these grapes when I bought them um, and they were not very delicious. So the container just labels them as green seedless grapes, but the uh, skin is very, very thick and they're kind of sour. 
fiber. So that tells me uh, a lot of fiber and this grape is not the variety that's like loaded with sugar like cotton candy grapes for example. Um, so I just want to keep that in mind when I get my results and I start licking them over. All right, so let's go ahead and eat these guys. But first, let me test my blood sugar. All right, here we go. So I just tested my blood sugar at the one hour mark and I am seriously so confused. This is not what I was expecting at all. I mean, 90? So the grapes had almost no impact on my blood sugar at all. It's just very, very surprising. And I know many of you even doubt that I have insulin resistance, but it's true. In 2017, I took a glucose tolerance test and an insulin assay test and it came back that I was definitely, what did my doctor call it? Insulin resistant slash glucose intolerant. And I've had gestational diabetes so I definitely have metabolic dysfunction. Um, so these results are just really surprising to me. I mean, I had been avoiding grapes for a long time because I was told that if you have metabolic dysfunction, grapes are not for you. Uh, but according to my experiment today, I can have one serving of grapes just fine. Let's see what happens at the two hour mark. At this point, I mean, I, I don't really think anything super interesting is gonna happen there. Well, there you have it. I didn't see much of a difference in how oranges, strawberries, and grapes impact my blood sugar. There may have been some minimal variability in how much my blood sugar rose and fell, but taking into account the margin of error for glucose monitors, I'd say they were pretty much the same. From this experiment, I can safely assume that oranges, strawberries, and grapes are all fine for my body for now, in moderation of course, as with all things. Okay, so just one last thing. So I will probably do another video about this at some point, but I wanted to share with you all just a few tips that I use on how I incorporate fruit into my diet because I know that many of us are a bit wary about how fruit impacts our blood sugar. So the most important thing is that I don't ever eat fruit by itself. I don't know if it's like a personal preference thing, but I just don't feel like fruit on its own is very satiating. So for example, during this experiment, you know, with any of the three foods that I tried, after one hour, I was just really, really hungry and didn't feel fulfilled. So I'm always eating fruit as an addition to something or paired with something. My favorite ways of eating fruit are like apples paired with peanut butter or some type of other nut butter like almond butter, um, plain yogurt topped with berries and also a sprinkling of pistachios, and then also as part of a breakfast plate. So um, as a side to something like eggs and avocado, I will just have a handful of fruit. Uh, my go-to's are kind of blueberries and blackberries and raspberries. Those are just my favorites. So I hope some of these tips are helpful so that you can also start incorporating fruit into your diet if you would like and if you feel okay about doing so. If you haven't checked out my other fruit blood sugar experiment where I test the impact of apples, blueberries, and bananas on my blood sugar, go ahead and check that out now. Otherwise, I will see you all in my next video. Bye. Thank you.